In about a month's time, there's going to be a total solar eclipse that's going to go from coast to coast in North America. So it's going to make landfall on the 21st of August, somewhere around Portland, Oregon, that sort of area. And it's going to go all the way across America, through Kentucky, and out into the Atlantic on the other side. Now, that's about 3,000 miles or so, and it does that in about three hours, which means that the moon's shadow here is moving at about 1,000 miles per hour. That's not that much faster than a plane flies. You know, it's, it's, it's a little more than the speed of sound, but not greatly more. And you know, when you see these things flying over the sky, they take quite a time. So it's something that I've heard, but never really sure that I believed it, is you can actually see the moon's shadow rushing towards you at 1,000 miles per hour. And it's something I've always wanted to see. So in principle, yeah, in a nice place in America, you can see for 100 miles. And if it's coming towards you at 1,000 miles per hour, then you should be able to see the, the moon's shadow for about six minutes coming towards you. Don't know if that's going to be possible, but I'm going to give it a go. And as you know, a sort of backup plan, I've also got one of these, these drone guys, which, uh, you know, if it's cloudy on the mountain range, you can always drive around for a bit. You know, if you get out on the plains or something, that might be really quite useful. Excellent. So there, birds and all, is the moon. And in about, ooh, three or four days, that's gonna sail just past the sun, but it's gonna miss the sun. And then, if we get it back again, Then, in another month's time, it's going to do that again, but this time, it's actually going to go in front of the sun, and it'll be a total, total solar eclipse, and I'm going to see that in Wyoming somewhere, um, in about a month's time. However, uh, I will also be taking some telescopes to watch the eclipse, one in the visible light, one in the H-alpha. Okay, so that's the pressure-tuned H-alpha telescope, that one there. And then I've got this little Magsutov who's going to have a solar filter on it. So hopefully I'm going to do some good solar observations over the period of about a month, and maybe some astronomy with the little guy here. Now, I really hadn't done much with the H-alpha. I mean, I did some very preliminary stuff when I did the transit of Venus uh, quite some time ago now. On the 5th of June 2012, the last Venus transit of our lifetimes occurred. So I've got the H-alpha telescope here. And the transit starts at about midday and ends near sunset. Incidentally, one of the most gratifying things about watching this transit was just one of those great moments where you actually get to feel the solar system in motion. I mean, not only do you get to see Venus track across the surface of the sun, even with my poor equipment, you get to see the evolution of the solar flares over that period of time. And recently I got this much better telescope that just blows the socks off the previous one. In fact, when I first saw the sun through this thing, it was almost a religious experience. You know, you just sort of look into this, this sort of magma god, this sort of immeasurable, yeah, and you just watch these solar flares that are like 10 times the size of the Earth just sort of boiling away there. So I also plan, um, seeing as I'll be out in the open for long periods of time, that I'm going to actually do some time lapses of these solar flares and also uh, the sun takes about a month, just under a month, three or so weeks to actually fully rotate. So I'm also planning to um, do a time lapse of the sun rotating from day to day because uh, I, I, I've, I've done some tinkering with this. I took some pictures on consecutive days and there's a huge amount of change in both the features on the sun and the, the rotation is very clear. So I'm hoping to get that done. And there's a whole other series of things I'm... So this is sort of my uh, vacation. Um, but as you'll see, I've got rather a lot planned. Uh, so what do we got? I'm going to see the solar roadways up in Idaho. And 
Then, ah yes, I've got these things. Now, <laughs> these are cheap milligram balances from China. They're about 50 bucks or so. But, in principle, uh, you can measure the difference in the Earth's gravity with these things, in principle. So, you know, if I can weigh 50, well, let's say I can weigh 10 grams within a milligram, that's one part in 10,000. And if I go up a kilometer mountain or something, then I've got one kilometer in about 6,000 further away from the center of the Earth. So in principle, yeah, I should be able to measure the difference in the Earth's gravity from like the base of the mountains to the top of the mountains and even hopefully I'm going to get into some caves and see if you can measure the difference of the gravity in the caves just using a sort of $50 balance like that. Then what else are we going to do? Oh yes, we're going to measure, we have my gamma ray spectrometer here. I'm going to go to the beaches in California to see if you can detect any of the Fukushima radiation, which would be cesium-137, or whether the radiation is all thorium that's sort of washed out of the Sierra Nevada. And, oh yeah, whilst down that way, I might go and see the Hyperloop test track, Elon Musk's Hyperloop test track, just see what that's like. And then I'm probably gonna be taking my carbon dioxide meter as well, such that I wanna see if when I get up on top of the mountains, if the ratio of carbon dioxide to oxygen that you breathe out actually changes as you go up the mountains. I'm just curious, see how that works. And also I'll be taking some scales with me because I'm gonna be on the fast food diet all the time I'm out there. So this is something that I used to do quite a lot when I lived in upstate New York was in the summer, I would just throw a load of stuff in the back of my car and basically live out of the car for about, whatever, a few weeks, whilst I drifted around the Rocky Mountain area. And I, I got such fond memories of it. And so that's basically what I'm gonna be doing again. Uh, but the nice thing is that I've got all these pictures from uh, basically a decade ago now. So I'm curious to see how much America has changed in that intervening decade. So yeah, for the next month, it's gonna be uh, kind of different stuff on this channel. And just so you know, this, uh, if you have any idea what that is, not a little gnome hat or something, this is actually a single crystal of silicon. So your computer is actually contingent on this very material. So what they do is they get a big bowl of molten silicon and they dip a little seed crystal in the top and then they slowly pull it out and it gets bigger and bigger. And then they, all the all impurities tend to come out in the first little bit and then it's really pure for the rest of it as they drag it out and you get this huge long pillar looking thing of silicon that they then slice up into nice um, slices and that's what they use to make their computer chips that's in the computer you're currently watching this on. And there's all sorts of weird things about this. I don't know whether you're able to see that, but it's got like a little cross on it. I still don't really understand what the hell that's all about. So, yeah. So you see there's a ridge there, a ridge there. And there's four of them. There are exactly four, four ridges. I don't know what causes that. It's weird.